Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon, everyone, and our 4K unboxing of Descent Legends of the Dark. This is, of course, Fantasy Flight's newest iteration of Descent. According to them, it's not Descent 3.0. There's been a lot of talk, both good and bad, um, about this game, but I guess uh, any publicity is good publicity. So this is Act 1, which means we should be planning on seeing uh, additional acts, but this is, you know, Fantasy Flight's definitive dungeon crawler, and in this iteration of it, it is heavily app-driven. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's in the box, uh, the physical components, and uh, we'll just go from there. So again, there is this uh, fancy box, which stands quite tall, over 10 inches tall. Uh, so it would still fit in a Calyx cube, um, but pretty much is going to fill it up. Uh, it's got this like you know ridge that runs along the interior. That's actually this is a box that fits over top of this one, and then this bottom portion um, is like a, a second box. This is actually not the first time I've seen this. Um, Lords of Waterdeep has this same where the box doesn't look like it closes all the way and then has like a decorative uh, interior box that you can see but anyways so here is the lid uh, nothing fancy on the inside but that's all right and we have our uh, learn to play manual we have our lore guide and then we have uh, appears to be some advertisements yeah, this is just a single sheet of the turn off role playing campaign so a whole bunch of miniatures we're going to be taking a look at some of those in close-up form I'm just going to show off briefly the lore guide this is interesting because it's it truly is exactly what they say it's really just um, gives you background information on all your characters they're it's really just kind of all fluff um, there's not a whole lot of point to it. There's a fun map on the back of the area. Normally, with a Fantasy Flight game, you see the Learn to Play guide, and then you see the reference manual. The reference manual, in this instance, where everything is kind of defined in a dictionary style, is actually built into the app. There's no physical version of it. So, again, an interesting choice by Fantasy Flight to go that direction. This is the instructions for putting everything together, everything from miniatures to dials to all of the 3D scenery. And we will be uh, completing our 3D scenery build on camera. Uh, I'll probably do a speed up version of most everything because it appears to be straightforward, but I have heard the chests are a little trickier to put together um, than most, but as long as you pay attention to what they're asking you to do, it should be pretty straightforward. Also, the bookshelves I've heard are, are pretty tricky. Um, not sure why, but I guess we'll, we'll figure that out when we get there. And then here's the learn to play guide. Um, I've actually already read through this online. Um, Thursday evening, the uh, Fantasy Flight posted this uh, so you could read it online. And for the most part, if you are familiar with um, either Descent or Imperial Assault, their after urban campaigns that they created for solo play, or for Journeys in Middle-Earth especially, uh, you'd be very familiar with how things are working here. There's a little bit of a difference between how you get rid of fatigue and the ability to flip your weapons and your cards, all that. Um, the only thing that, that seems like could give people trouble, and is probably going to have a lot of talk about, um, and I've mentioned this in some of my videos before, that is the uh, movement that has to do with elevation because this terrain is three-dimensional so there is actually um, higher and lower terrain let's see if we can find where they talk about it here here we go so for example staircases how they talk about how you can jump up to the second level you can't jump all the way up to the third but you can jump up to the second level not the first um, so I'm assuming you have to be adjacent to said space that you're going to jump up two levels on. Just that's really the only part of the in instruction manual that I kind of was like, huh, maybe I need to reread this and probably will need some clarification. Also the overhang uh, rules here might get a little squirrely simply because 
they have created instances where you can actually tuck your character under uh, a level, uh, so kind of under the cliff. Other than that, it's very straightforward. Um, they talk about battle and everything here, but again, the app is taking care of all that math for you, So, uh, but not too bad, uh, especially if you've played a game of Descent before. All right, so here is all of the, no, this is not all the miniatures, because uh, we don't have the heroes here, so let's just take a quick look at these. Okay, this whole thing's gonna come out. And here we have some of the other miniatures down below. So this is the big boss guy here. He's got his own tray. Let's spin this around so we can take a look at some of the heroes are in gray. So there's four heroes that you start with and two heroes that you can unlock. Um, and I believe these are the two, these small ones that you can unlock. What's really nice about the game is that you don't necessarily have to take um, each one into every campaign, but you can uh, rotate through. So one um, scenario, I may take Cirrus here, and I think his name is Gladden the Elf, and the next one I may take these two. What's really nice about that, and um, they did this in, uh, Plat Hat Games did this in their Aftermath campaign, where your, your heroes are going to have the opportunity to level up, even if you did not play with them, but also you're going to get to experience all the heroes in one playthrough. You don't have to decide, all right, this time I'm just going to play with Sirius. I'm only upgrading Sirius. Um, you'll be able to bounce back and forth, which I really appreciate in a campaign-driven story like this. So that is, again, we'll take a closer look at those miniatures here in a little bit. All right, then we've got what appears to be a whole bunch of cardboard. We haven't quite gotten to the bottom of this box yet. Ooh, and that is a thick stack of cardboard. Look at that. It's pretty heavy. But again, there is 3D scenery in here. Here you can see the punch out for the dragon statue, which is going to be pretty intense, along with like all these fatigue tokens, um, ready tokens, I think, or what those are called. So a whole lot of cardboard in here. That's probably most of the weight of this box. Then we got some uh, custom dice. Again, uh, everything is either stars for successes, pluses are gonna allow you to take fatigue to get a success, and then your surge symbol, which if you played a uh, fantasy flight game, Descent or Imperial Assault, you'd be familiar with. Um, and you're really only ever rolling one die. So it's whether you roll the black, the orange, or the blue for your weapon. Obviously, I think the blacks are actually the best. Give you the best opportunity to get successes. These little chits you're supposed to pop into the bases um, of the enemies and to help you not only discern you know, one versus the next, also the little notches are supposed to be, uh, you can spin them around for people who are colorblind which is just a, a nice touch, uh, quality of life touch. This piece here is a, according to the instruction manual, is a riser. So if you have, for example, this large behemoth here, who I think is the only one I can see that's got a oversized base, if he ends up on a staircase, then you're gonna need to put a riser down to keep him from tipping over on said staircase. So just a nice little touch that they actually thought about that. Hopefully we don't lose track of it. All right, and then we've got some cards. These appear to be like consumables and armor and stuff. Dusk plate, um, mud potion. We'll take a closer look at those in here in a little bit. More consumables. Here we go, here's a weapon of sorts. Again, uh, these appear to be trade cards, skill cards. Uh, this is probably a reference card. All right, set of sleeves. A uh, small set of sleeves, only eight, but these are for playing with your, when you're playing with your heroes, you slide their weapons in here, and you're, you always have two weapons, but the other side of the weapon is like an upgraded side, and you want to be able to flip your card um, to, you know, ready it and change weapons. You have to be able to flip it, and it loses fatigue and things like that, so to keep all of that straight and still have an upgrade on one side, they have given you sleeves, uh, but only enough to just sleeve your, uh, basically the weapon cards you're, you're rolling with. They're also 
promoting Gamgenic, which is their new sleeves. Fantasy Flight's actually no longer in the business of producing their own sleeves. Um, they're pushing the Gamgenic sleeves. And then last but not least, we have uh, a few things in here. Let's, let's open this up and actually take a look at what's in here. All right, so here are all of our heroes. Healy, Galadin. I, I honestly don't understand why Fantasy Flight continued to use Galadin here as one of their primary uh, shots to use because I think a lot of people who are complaining about the artwork are specifically referring to Galadin here, who is not the most pleasant of fellows. They also show a lot of Brim here, who does have this ridiculous hat. Um, I feel like they, they could have shown a lot of him, um, should have shown a lot of Chance, a lot more Chance, uh, a lot more of Cirrus, Healy, uh, anybody but this guy. But anyways, and see here you can see that all of these hero cards are two-sided. Um, there's not a huge amount of difference between one or the other. For example, their movement and their health are the same. Um, and the, you know what you're rolling for the weapon and your all this is the same. Let's see if these statistics are the same. Uh, yes, but this side can handle two fatigue. This side can handle three. This side's surge ability is um, add one success. Then you may suffer one fatigue to prepare one card. That is, um, you know, flipping it over. You can handle medium armor, add one, then suffer one to prepare one card. Okay, so that's the same. Uh, light step, one, take one fatigue during your turn to shift one. Okay, so really the only difference is this ability right here and the amount of fatigue he can take. But you can see he pretty much used this once and his fatigue is full. Over here, he can actually do light step twice before his fatigue is full. So uh, again, doesn't appear to, maybe all the, some of the other ones are very different, but anyways, let's get to these. These are what they're calling underlay tiles. Uh, simply when building out the 3D terrain, you're gonna put these underneath and it you know creates edges or areas that you can maybe walk through, like for example, um, water, but you're gonna hinder your terrain this is a way for them to create, you know, water spaces, lava spaces, um, difficult terrain, stuff like that, without having to build it into the 3D terrain and actually make a cardboard token for it. This is, you know, just heavy cardstock. It will easily slide underneath the terrain without, you know, making it sit crooked. So people are complaining about how thin these are, but it makes sense that these are thin. And as long as you keep them stored away, um, with the rest of these, it, they shouldn't get bent up or anything like that. So, all right. So we have made it to the bottom of our top box here. <clears throat> there is uh, somewhat of a typical Fantasy Flight insert here. You can see that it really doesn't do a whole lot. Normally, they're like taller sides or, or something like that, but they've kept it pretty simple. But Again, uh, the majority of your game, especially the miniatures, are to be stored in this upper box. And then if you lift out this upper box, you can see that it's been designed so that this catches it, keeps it up. And this is where you're gonna be storing all of your 3D terrain. So you should be able to put it together, even glue it together if you so choose, and then store it in here. But this uh, interior is not just fancy looking. It actually serves a purpose. And that is if you pull it out and flip it over, it's actually a piece of scenery itself. It's the largest um, area and it's also a raised up area. So there will be times where they will call for you to use this. So the, the, I could see some people complaining about that, that you know, you can't just keep your terrain neatly in the box and only pull out what you need. If you ever needed this one, you're gonna have to dump it all on the table, pull this out, play with it, and then get everything back in the box. There's probably only one or two scenarios that they use this, let's be honest, but um, that that is something that you will have to deal with. So um, what we are gonna be coming, or attempting to come up with on the channel is some way to have a storage solution 
not just for our tokens and our cards in that upper box, but also a storage solution for our scenery down here. And it's going to make it easy to pull out. <coughs> Excuse me. Easy to pull out so that if you do need this um, piece, you're not like just dumping everything on the table. Or also, if like, you know, you just wanted the doors, you just needed the pillars, you can easily pull out the pillars. So we'll see what we come up with. This is definitely an interesting shape here. It's very square, but pretty deep. Um, so keep an eye out for that on the channel. Uh, from here, let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the cards, some of the miniatures, some of the cardboard. We're just gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a good look at everything. All right, here are three of our uh, starting heroes. Basically your uh, wizard, your shaman, and your mage uh, stereotypes. Um, this is uh, uh, definitely a step up for Fantasy Flight in their uh, miniatures department. These miniatures are a little bit larger scale than say like a Descent or Imperial Assault. Feel bigger. Um, I'll have to at some point compare them to Journeys in Middle Earth. And they're definitely, they're very lightweight. Um, you know, the, the plastic doesn't feel any more bendy than any other typical plastic. Here, I'll show you the backside of, of her as well. Um, but they're, they're super lightweight, but super detailed as well. Here, if we um, just kind of zoom in on Cirrus's eagle here you can see there's a lot of detail in the in the wings and you know the flame everything else they've got dynamic bases here so um, again very very cool stuff here For example, here, um, Galadin, the, the elf here, the, the miniature doesn't look quite as bad as the artwork. And I think that's a case of the artwork. You know, they gave him a very long face. He's got these ridiculously long muscular arms, but the, the miniature doesn't look quite as bad, but he's yet to be painted. But his, his arrow here seems very... Not necessarily fragile, but I just worry that it um, be a little worried about it. Not worried about the the dwarf though; she is nice and chunky. Same thing with the cat here. Uh, actually, the cat's claws appear to be uh, in pretty good shape. <clears throat> Where you can see just like the detail on her shield. There's a lot there. Great detail, all that detail in the base. So this is definitely the best miniatures we've seen. Okay, it's wearing a mask. I was like, what's up with those lips? But it has like a Hannibal type mask on it. All right, so those are the main characters. Let's uh, pull out some of the monsters. Okay, so here are some of our monsters. I don't quite know the names of all of these guys yet. It doesn't look like they're actually featured in the lore guide and there's no card for them. So I guess we'll figure out their names once we fire up the app. Um, you know, these guys are pretty cool. They're actually like, there's three of them there. Um, then there's this big rock golem here. It, it, he gives off the appearance, if we can get him to focus here. Maybe not. Um, it almost looks cracked, but I think that's just the way he 
is uh, there you can see right below it like at his neckline um, I think that's just the way they put it together here pull out the other one yeah the other one is appears to be separated the same way not quite as bad though so we'll definitely have to be putting some some plastic putty in there before we paint it but these guys um, you know, there's some great detail on them. You actually see that his leg is like separated back here. Yeah, you can see it better from this direction. So obviously they needed a big shield to help him stand up. Uh, this guy's pretty, pretty creepy. He's got a lot of stuff dangling off him here that, uh, you know, seems... It could be a little fragile. I wonder if painting these things up will help. I uh, also wonder what material they used because this doesn't feel like the um, you know, same plastic as, as their other miniatures. All right, and so if we move on from these guys, that essentially what you just saw were the ones who were in the box with the heroes so these guys these are all the guys who are in the um, big top portion and I've heard a lot of people complain about there not being a good selection of um, villains in this game but to, to me there, there seems to be a, a fine selection I'm not too concerned about um, you know feeling like I'm just playing the same enemies over and over again. He's got a really, he's got a cool base, but this guy's probably one of the the crowd pleasers. Um, very dynamic base here, dynamic pose. He's like flying through the air, striking you down. There's also this guy that's got, you know, looks like a whole bunch of fragile bits here. But again, really amazing detail on these guys and then last but not least we have got two more here some wolves and then this lady who's like bent over for the most part I mean meant to be bent over but so that does it for all of the monsters um, let's back the camera out a little bit and we'll put the main bad guy on camera for you so you can take a look at him all right so here's the the main bad guy the one you have to put together um, he's definitely you know a massive figure here um, can't really decide have not decided yet whether I will keep him nice and protected in the box. Obviously, that means I'm going to have to take him apart and put him together. Um, may uh, try and see if I can paint him up and, and do the whole put him together, take him apart thing. See how that goes. Um, see how many scenarios he's used in, whether it's worth it, or we may just glue them all together and then display him somewhere. But he's obviously not going to go back in the box like this, but he's a... a very detailed, very fantastic model here. Um, went together pretty easily. There was, um, so you can't see, okay, there you go. There's this very specific hole right here in his weapon that I guess is just meant to be there. Uh, it just doesn't kind of fit with the rest of his very organic nature. And I thought at first it was gonna be something that I had to uh, insert something into, but I, there's nothing else to it. So just, thought that was interesting and I'd point that out but there's the main overlord boss um, let's take a look at some of the cards now all right so we're just going to take a look at some of the cards here we're not going to go through all of them in detail but I did want to show off how um, you know the various two-sided cards work so you can see here that this uh, rune of blades here we're actually looking at the upgraded side because of these two little arrows so when you start with this weapon you will have it on this side where you can see that it can for one fatigue it takes certain things this card can actually hold fatigue and then i'm assuming um actually it appears to be like three of these 
that you would pair it up with say this one and again you'd want to take it to this side so what you're actually going to do is sleeve them back to back like this so you'd have uh, rune of blades and you could use this as much as you want it's got some range to it it's got slash ability uh, you can fill it up with fatigue and then you can either take the ready or prepare ready action or use a prepare um, ability to flip it now all of a sudden we've got yeah we went from three range to four range this has got the pierce ability it cannot take any fatigue which is interesting but it has a separate uh, action unique action to the card so this is kind of how it works and then at some point it looks like you could probably uh, take on ice storm here and say replace lightning strike with ice storm but then also at some point you can upgrade ice storm to this side or let's just go back here and look at the, the ones we were looking at so if we upgrade both of these actually they would look like this so this one again has now ignis and pierce four and three so yeah we went from four to two to four to three and this one can now take seven fatigue on its one side three and three versus here it was three and two so very interesting um you know uh, the back and forth between the, the weapons and the cards also the fact that more than just your uh character card can take fatigue it used to be that you just piled fatigue onto your character card and that was that we also have a whole bunch of trinkets here which again look to be like metals and rune stones and things like that um, again, we're not going to go through all of these in too much detail. Here's some consumables on the end, but these are also double-sided. Um, so you can see one side versus the next. So flipping these over may be what you want to prepare or ready. Then we've also got, um, you know, just some some skill cards here. You can see these skill cards are specific to a particular hero. Um, but these again are also double sided so uh, this one can take fatigue it's got a special action you can use this one can also take fatigue so you don't actually spend fatigue to do these things that it takes actions but you could choose to put your fatigue on say this card because you're gonna flip it sooner versus say your character card because you don't want to flip your character card so again um, you know there's just more skills. I'm not going to go through all these. I don't want to, you know, spoil anything because a lot of these are to be unlocked throughout the game. I just wanted to kind of show off how this whole, all of these double-sided cards work. And then the last bit of grouping here is, you know, you've got things like armor, like the Cloak of Sorrow. That again is, at the start of return you may discard one condition. At the start of return you may replace one condition with one other condition. Um, now this is the upgraded side, so I'm assuming these don't, uh, similar to the weapons, you don't, you're not just going to be flipping them um, like some of the other cards, but let's see what the consumables look like. Okay, so this does appear to be upgraded mud potion versus a standard mud potion. So again, um, I guess they'll tell you to whether you have obtained the upgraded version or not. And again, there's... You know, crimson potion, rogue sweat, uh, rabbit foot potion, you know, just all sorts of, of fun stuff here. So, all right, so that is all the cards. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually uh, finish off this video. We don't want it going too, too long, but we've taken a nice close look at the miniatures. And um, in my next video, I'm actually going to break into all of the um, cardboard because we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the, the scenery together on camera. Um, probably speed up most of it, but I want people to be able to see a how you put together things like the bookshelf and the chest Which have been giving people trouble um, But also I wanted you to see kind of what all the uh, scenery looks like uh, Because a lot of people are saying it's just gonna look cheap because it's just cardboard a lot of people are like Yeah, it's better than nothing. So uh, we will certainly be taking a look at all of this new uh, newly added stuff to the um, world of descent in our next video so please check back in for that if you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a thumbs up 
And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.